welcome everyone to Memorial Stadium, Death Valley, Clemson, South Carolina, for the 98th meeting all time in this fierce rivalry of the Palmetto State between South Carolina and Clemson. Sean McDonough along with Ed Cunningham and Leslie Goodell, delighted to have you with us. An overflow crowd in attendance. This stadium filled to capacity and then some. And the Clemson Tigers already on the field ready for the opening kickoff. The Tigers won the toss and deferred so Lou Holtz and the South Carolina Gamecocks will get the football first. Tony Lazaro kicks off for Clemson. That's Derek Watson who is back deep for the opening kickoff. Along with Ryan Brewer and Derek Watson a guy who they've got more involved at South Carolina in their special teams their best athlete on both offense and special teams had a block punt last week against Florida overcast and chilly day the temperature not expected to get out of the high 40s and the kickoff down to Derek Watson who dropped the ball at the three yard line and he slips down at the 20. where the Gamecocks begin on offense. Led by Phil Petty, the junior from Boiling Springs, South Carolina. 55% completions this season, throwing for 191 yards per game. His career high set earlier this year against Mississippi State when he threw for 305. He's playing on two sore ankles. And the Gamecocks open in the eye formation. And it's Watson with lots of room. It took the safety Robert Carswell to make the tackle after a gain of 13 out to the 33 yard line. Sean, South Carolina started the season about 90 to 95 percent one back. And they've gone to the two back set when they saw, found they were protecting some leads earlier in the year. They found a lot of success running downhill with Derek Watson in the one back formation he tends to do too many moves in the backfield when he gets a lead blocker he's much better going straight ahead and stay with the eye and no tight end three wide receivers it's Watson again taking the pitch and another first down as he rumbles for 11 out to the 44 yard line where Nick Eason the defensive end took down Watson Watson's averaging just under 92 yards per game rushing 916 yards rushing for the season he's just a sophomore from Williamston South Carolina when you throw in last week's uh, punt block touchdown against Florida 11 touchdowns South Carolina on offense in 1999 only had eight complete touchdowns so he's three ahead of the entire team from last year the handoff to the fullback Andrew Pinnock and he stopped for a loss Back of the 42, a loss of two. Pinnock can play fullback and tailback in this offense. Chad Carson made the tackle. And Pinnock is the big of the two. Derek Watson's kind of the slasher. Pinnock, 250 pounds, 245. He lost about 20 pounds from last year. He's the pounder, and then they get Derek Watson, who's the slippery guy and can take it the distance. Watson, the big play threat out of the backfield for South Carolina. Second down and 12. And he will operate out of the shotgun. And the pass nearly intercepted. Alex Ardley made the quick move on the ball and nearly picked it off. He's been outstanding at cornerback this season. Some of his colleagues in the secondary haven't been quite as effective, and that's a big reason why Clemson has been torched through the air in recent weeks. And Reggie Herring says this is the only guy that he allows to play very aggressively out there on the edge. Ardley, the only one that he will allow in press coverage that time. Very aggressive coverage by Ardley, reading Petty's eyes and making a break on the ball. Third down and 12, just underway. South Carolina visiting Clemson. Ready out of the shotgun again. Under pressure throws. It is caught for a first down. Brian Scott into Clemson territory. 
to the 37 yard line a gain of 21 and the same problem for the Clemson Tiger defense recurs early in this game they're giving up big plays through the air lately and this play is all set up because of the soft coverage by Crutchfield the corner and the safety Carswell cannot get over there's just no they don't make there's not making that receiver change his route at all Watson the tailback on first and ten slides down to the 32 yard line Lee Vaughn made the tackle. Nearly two and a half minutes played. South Carolina trying to end a three game losing streak against their arch rivals, the Clemson Tigers. Clemson's won the last three head to head. But the good news for the Gamecocks, the visiting team has won eight of the last nine in this rivalry. Second down and five. Petty throws on the run. First down. Jamel Kelly, their leading receiver. Chopped down at the 25-yard line by Charles Hafley. Hafley's had an excellent season. And safety for the Tigers. That's a gain of seven. Kelly started all the way across the formation. A rollout by Petty to the right. Kelly just right in front of his quarterback the whole way. That's Crutchfield trying to give Chase a very long way. And he gets blown up by Ryan Brewer. Nice job by Brewer coming back and setting a block for his receiver mate. Eighth play of the opening possession of the football game. North Carolina facing a third and 17, converted to third and 12 after an offside penalty against Clemson. That was the key play so far. Petty going for the end zone. Diving catch out of bounds. Jamel Kelly with a great catch. Alex hardly beaten. He had the coverage. And a good throw by Petty, but. Just a little bit wide, and Kelly couldn't stay on the field to play. Got good separation, not great speed by Kelly, but nice separation, lays out to catch it. Good call by the official out of bounds, but what a great effort by Kelly. And very early on, Skip Holtz, the offensive coordinator for South Carolina, showing a lot of different looks to this Clemson defense. Spread formation here. Four wide receivers. Watson stays into the right and takes the handoff on the draw. Well defended by Braxton K. Williams. He took down Watson after a gain of three. It'll be third down and seven for the Gamecocks. Braxton K. Williams is kind of the forgotten linebacker for Clemson. When you have Chad Carson, who's averaging nearly 13 tackles per game, and a, a Butkus finalist and Keith Adams, but he's having a nice year. Four sacks, very aggressive getting up field. And Clemson will always bring their outside backer. They stay with the spread formation on third down and seven. Bear in mind, both teams have problems with field goal kicking. They're in field goal range right now, and that pass is dropped. It would have been a first down for Brian Scott, but he dropped it. Robert Carswell was closing in, but that ball should have been caught for a first down. Instead, it brings on the first field goal attempt of Jason Corsi's career, and he's a senior walk-on who hasn't attempted a field goal in a game since his senior year in high school when he made one out of two in Lake Forest, Illinois. He took over last week and made all three of his point-afters against Florida. And this is a 40-yard field goal try from the right hash mark. He hooked it. Why? Lou Holtz has a word for his new kicker. It was pointed out to Lou that, of course, he hadn't tried one since high school. Lou said that's probably a good thing. <laughs> the reason Not in this instance. The reason he went with Corsi is because he thought the senior wouldn't talk himself out of a kick before he kicked it. That time just got too much of the snap on it. So Clemson has the football for the first time today. After a drive of more than four minutes, yields nothing on the scoreboard for South Carolina. Woodrow dance with the quarterback, hands off to the leading rusher, Travis Zachary. And he's out to the 30. A good gain on first down. Zachary got seven. And he has a chance to reach 1,000 yards for the season with 72 yards today. Andre Offing made the tackle. Zachary, we we're just talking about Braxton K. Williams on defense. Great year, kind of in the 
Back behind the numbers, Dantzler has put up Anrod Gardner. He's having a sensational season. Dantzler appears to be changing the play. Gamecock bouncing around, bluffing one blitz, then bringing another. And a quick pass caught by Jackie Robinson. He's chopped down right near the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Those of you just joining us, welcome everyone to Memorial Stadium in Clemson, South Carolina. Underway in the first quarter, South Carolina drove down to the 23-yard line of Clemson its first possession and missed the 40-yard field goal. This is Clemson on offense for the first time and converting on its first series with a first down. That was a third down and three pass from Woodrow Dantzler to Travis Zachary. He's out to the 37-yard line of Clemson, a gain of six and a first down. Tommy Bowden, the Clemson head coach in his second season here. And they anticipate he'll be here for a while, signed a contract extension earlier in the week. And we'll keep him here through 2007, boost his salary to about $1.1 million per year. And Lou Holtz in his second season at South Carolina, engineering another of his patented turnarounds. The six different program of which he's worked his magic. Zachary took a pop as he crossed the 40 and made it to the 42. And this is something South Carolina, there's no huddle. They see it every day in practice there. Offense also goes with the no huddle, so no big adjustment for South Carolina with Clemson's offense. They punch three wide receivers to Dantzler's left. He throws on the run, looking for Gardner, and it was well defended by Sheldon Brown. That's the best Clemson receiver going against the best cornerback. When we were talking to Charlie Strong, the defensive coordinator, Sheldon Brown, by far their best cover guy, he was saying, yeah, we play right and left corners, but you got the feeling that Sheldon Brown was going to look up and try to find Rod Gardner a few times. Excellent coverage that time by Brown. And what a terrific job Charlie Strong has done really in both seasons at South Carolina as the defensive coordinator. The defense wasn't the problem last year when they were winless. Uh, major struggles on offense. Here comes a blitz. Dantzler steps up. Gets away from the defenders, has a first down in the South Carolina territory at the 42-yard line. A 15-yard run by Dantzler. He's still bothered by an injured ankle, but Ed, he looks a lot better running than we saw him a few weeks ago against Georgia Tech when he was really hobbled. He has a tendon in his left ankle that pops out every now and then. Right here, he looks as close to 100% as we've seen him in a long time. Slid a little funny there, but... Tommy Bowden has to be very happy with his quarterback running like that. Zachary, the object of the fake. Shannon Wadley was not fooled as he dropped Dantzler for a loss. Back to the 44, loss of two. Thanks to the tackle by Wadley, the junior from Swainsboro, Georgia, in his first year as a starter for the Gamecocks. And Charlie Strong really had to do a sell job to Lou Holtz to set this defense up. But the personnel that South Carolina had has fits this. They have a lot of fast linebackers and defensive back. Dantzler throws complete to Joe Don Reams. Back in action after missing the last ball game against Florida State with a sprained neck. Short game on the play. The spot the ball at the 39. And will bring up third down and seven. Chancellor, we were talking to him yesterday, he said that his injury is something that can't get worse. It won't get better till surgery, but it's really been in his head has been the biggest problem. He's been worried about it so much. And they have confidence in Willie Simmons, who's come off the bench a couple of times this year for Dancer. They need to go to him. They will, without hesitation. The red shark, first down on the throw to Kevin Youngblood. The red shirt freshman who's been a more frequent target in recent weeks. Down at the 24-yard line, a gain of 15 and a first down for Clemson. And, Sean, yesterday I spent a lot of time watching the film of the Florida State game. And, okay, we've seen Danzler run, and he looks fine. But he didn't even look good throwing the ball against Florida State. He could not step into the ball. And right now, he, like I said, he looks like he did in the first six ball games of the season. A week off after the Florida State game certainly seems to have helped. It was the first off week of this season for Clemson. Oh, did Danzler get buried, but it's a good game. John Stamper put his stamp firmly on number one. Woodrow Danzler 
But he actually knocked him ahead for an additional yard for the quarterback. I knew you'd get a stamp in there pretty quickly. This is a great shot, but you know what? Ooh, this actually probably helps the confidence of Danzel to be able to take a shot like that with the injury, get back, and call the next play. Here's Zachary trying to turn the corner, and he's pulled down from behind by DeAndre Island, a true freshman with another nice play. They lost Antoine Neesmith, one of their best defensive backs, early in the year due to injury. Island has stepped in, and he is getting better with every game. His first game in against Vanderbilt, he had to start a true freshman, didn't really know the defense. He had 12 tackles and an interception. Charlie Strong did not expect that kind of performance out of a true freshman. 13th play of the drive. Each team has marched on its first possession. South Carolina missed a field goal. Now it's Zachary taking them inside the 10. Kenny Harney made the tackle at the nine yard line. Harney has also been battling injuries. He was kicked in the leg earlier in the season and actually fractured a bone. You can see that he's limping a little bit as he runs off. Bruised the knee against Tennessee right when he came back. So this South Carolina team, it's like the ankle team. They have about seven guys who play with bad ankles. Hey, Witherspoon in a pullback leading away for Zachary. Down to the one to the goal line. And stopped just short of the end zone. Again, it was DeAndre Island, the safety making the tackle. He didn't get the touchdown, but it looks like a first down. It'll be first and goal from inside the one for the Tigers. Mentioned in early, Al Travis Zachary is kind of the forgotten guy. What an amazing season for Zachary. He's 11th in the NCAA with 16 touchdowns scored. If he scores, which you get a feeling they're going to give it to him, he'll tie the single season record. Zachary again. One Jing touchdown. Zachary adding to his Clemson career record. Aaron Hunt on to try the extra point. Jeff Scott is the holder. Henry Owen the snapper. And on the extra point by Aaron Hunt, Clemson leads seven and up. So 4:25 left in the first quarter. The Tigers lead the Battle of South Carolina seven nothing. Team has had the ball once and Clemson leads seven to nothing. South Carolina took the opening kickoff, marched 57 yards in 10 plays, but Jason Corsi attempting his first ever field goal at the collegiate level missed from 40 yards. Clemson took over and went 77 yards in 16 plays and scored the touchdown on the one yard run by Travis Zachary. Derek Watson returns the kickoff, but only to the 21 yard line. Check out the Dell game solutions when South Carolina is on offense. Well, it would have looked really bright if we'd have got these in before South Carolina's first drive because they already are pounding at Clemson. Use some mass, max protection, leave some guys in, pick up those outside blitzes, and for Clemson defense, bring the kitchen sink. We've talked about Petty's bad ankles. Get some pressure on him. He's going to have a tough time getting out of the pocket. No flag. There is a flag now, and the whistles are actually stopping the play. Defense violated the neutral zone rules. Five yard penalty. First down. Tommy Bowden seems perplexed about that development. In his second season here, six and six last year, and eight wins this year. But they started eight and all. And they had visions of a national championship dancing in their heads. But the schedule got tougher at the end of the season. And a big problem lately as they dropped. Two in a row to Georgia Tech and Florida State. They've given up big plays. And here's another. Derek Watson on his way. Only one man can catch him, and he will not. Touchdown, 61 yards, Derek Watson. Jason Corsi, just his second week as the starting kicker, has to make a 35-yard extra point, and he made it to tie the game. 7-7 late in the first quarter on the touchdown run by Watson.
Jason Corsi will kick off. Bernard Rambert back for the kickoff along with Brian Mance. A lot of similarities between these two teams. And one of them is that neither team has really excelled this year on special teams. Kickoff down to Rambert at the five. The back up tailback trying to go across the field. And he returns it across the 25 yard line where he was tackled by Jeremiah Garrison. Eric Watson with his fourth touchdown run of 58 yards or longer this season. And this is all uh, because of the spread offense. When you run the spread offense, a lot of people think you're doing it to throw the ball. But at South Carolina, third in the SEC this year in rushing, Carswell, the safety, had to go over because of the twin set to his left, had a bad angle coming back and couldn't make the tackle. Already 100 yards rushing right on the butt before Watson here in the first quarter. And just six carries. Dance, the throw is almost intercepted. Dennis Quinn in that zone blitz look, the defensive end. Retreating off the line of scrimmage in the coverage. He had two interceptions against Georgia, and he nearly had another against Clemson. The biggest reason that Charlie Strong wanted to go to this defense was to create confusion, and that time Dancer did not see the defense. Of the and the pitch was not handled by Rambert. He fell on it for a loss back at the 21-yard line. ABC Sports presentation of college football. Return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. We're back at Death Valley. Sean McDonough at Cunningham. And Ed, in that first quarter, lots of offense. And I think if you're the Clemson Tigers, you still have to have concerns about your defense, giving up a lot of big plays of late and again in the first quarter. It's been one side for Clemson that's given them trouble. And the South Carolina has already shown that. The offense in trouble right now. Travis Zachary thrown for a loss by Dennis Quinn. Nice play by the defensive end, the sophomore from Washington, Georgia. There's yet another flag on the field. Already been six penalties in the first quarter. And a flag on the first play of the second quarter. Personal foul on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. At some point, Lou Holtz is going to have to call his team over and settle everybody down. This is getting ridiculous. That is 45 yards of penalties because of things that are happening not involved with the game. Out of the shotgun. Dancer handed it off to Travis Zachary. He gets a yard. It was Quinn who made the tackle again. And this defense by South Carolina, very effective right now, other than the 15-yard penalty. Charlie Strong, they studied the film of Mississippi State, Memphis, and Southern Miss to come up with this defense. For the season. Yeah. The to alignment fit. they've been using for the year, the 3-3-5 three, three, alignment. Just a three-man rush. But they're ready to pounce on Dantzler. They had it looked like the entire defense, with the exception of the front three, spying Dantzler as soon as he took off across the line. There are about five white shirts running at him, and they closed quickly at the 45-yard line, led by Willie Sams and Willie Offord. You got your three defensive linemen, and then what you're going to have is a one, two, three, four, five across zone with a three-deep umbrella behind it. Very hard because as a zone, they can peek in, and like you said, they're all spying on the quarterback. Four-man Rush, Dantzler spins away from it. And has perhaps a first down. This is going to be very close. From here, it seems that he has it just inside the 40-yard line. Again, it was Willie Sams who made the tackle. It is a first down for Tommy Bowden. His offensive coordinator, Rich Rodriguez, calls the plays. Bowden actively involved in the offense as well. The 32-12 and 12 record includes his two seasons at Tulane. Now in his second year here, Dantzler moves away from center. Bernard Rambert in it, the tailback position. Red formation this time, three receivers to the right. Dantzler. Trying to dance away from the traffic. And finally, he stopped for a loss back at the 21-yard line. Andre Goodman, the cornerback, with the primary tackle. Kenny Harney was in there as well. 
These are the types of plays that we're used to seeing Woody Dantzler make. He's dead to rights in the backfield. A nice job by South Carolina on the blitz, getting up the field. Runs out of the arm tackle of 96, Cecil Caldwell, a big defensive lineman. Tenth play of the drive for the Tigers. Dantzler rolls left and throws a bullet. Short of the first down to Justin Watts. He's down at the 12-yard line. First catch of the day for Watts, the senior from Florence, South Carolina, who this year will earn his fifth letter due to injuries. He'll be the first five-year letter winner in football here at Clemson since Stumpy Banks back in 1919. But Justin has never scored a touchdown. And that's the one goal that he has remaining as an individual. And the players are well aware of it. They'd love to see him score today against their arch rivals. Zachary wanted to throw it back to Dantzler. Throws instead over the middle. And it's intercepted. Terrible decision by Travis Zachary as he threw it up for grabs. And it was picked off. Cleveland Pinckney. The defensive lineman with the kick, his first of the year. And there is a flag thrown late. Dancer right there, sneaking back. Zachary going to throw it back. Three guys in coverage, and Pinckney, who was on the defensive line, did not drop off. Just a nice job of reading the play, running down the line of scrimmage. Very heads-up play for a nose guard. After the play was over, personal foul, lace hit. I guess it, defense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Cleveland Pinkney, the senior from Sumter, South Carolina, junior college transfer in his second year of USC with a big play. And the Tigers are denied deep in Gamecock territory. seen it all, but after uh, that picture, we've come close to seeing just about all of it. That must be tough to go to sleep at night with that thing on his face. Hinman wounded too much through the air today. North Carolina with 69 yards passing. But there was the big run, 61 yards for the touchdown from Derek Watson, who's stuffed this time by Jason Holloman. No gain on the play. Let's go down to the sideline and Welcome in, Leslie Goodell. Sean, you mentioned earlier our conversation with Lou Holtz on Wednesday, how he said that they weren't a very good team. They weren't responding well to their loss to Florida. Well, I spoke with him before the game, and he said up until Thursday they didn't respond. But the one thing they were doing was they were working hard, but they didn't show any emotion. He said it wasn't until yesterday that they really emotionally got into it. He figured they'd be emotionally fresh for today's game. Something about the sight of your arch rival and get the emotion level back up. Petty sack back at midfield. Terry Bryant with the sack. Charles Hafley, the safety, also in there on a blitz. It's the fourth sack of the season for Bryant, the senior from Savannah, Georgia. In his third year as a starter here at Clemson. The one thing Reggie Aaron, we just mentioned the numbers that this Clemson defense has given up in the last three games, said he is going to be aggressive. This is an all-out, what's called a zero blitz. Nobody's home, including the safety, Hafley, who's coming in to clean up the sack. Third down and 17 from the 50-yard line. Under four minutes left. First half, 7-7 seven, seven score. Just a four-man rush. Petty going deep to the near sideline. Caught, flag thrown. Brian Scott with a touchdown, but he might have pushed off on Alex Ardley. So there's no question that this call has to go against Scott. He pushed Artley, who had great position of the ball, right in the back to get separation. And one adjustment that South Carolina might want to think about making when they go into halftime is stop throwing the number 28 side. That's three That's balls. By the offense. Bottom of your screen right down here. Take a look as Scott gets those arms extended into the back to push off. Hardly had great position on the ball, was spinning around trying to make a play on it. Almost had an interception on an out route earlier in the game. Hardly playing very well against South Carolina. And certainly the official, the field judge, Mike Washington, had great position on the play, too. He was right there and made the correct call. So the Gamecocks are in reverse. Third down and 32. Their own 35-yard line. Watson. 
Gets 10. And he's well short of the first down. Keith Adams made the tackle. And the game, Cox will punt. That's where you see the effect Lou Holtz has on his son, Skip Holtz. Skip has gotten Dad to loosen up a little bit with this offense, run the spread, move it around some. That time, I believe, Coach Holtz probably told his son, let's just get some more field position and punt this thing away at third and 32. Tyler Dean punts. Very high punt. Fair catch called for and made by Brian Mance. Back for the final 244 of the first half right after this. With a slight edge in time of possession in a very evenly played first half. Pass out of the flat to just Watts. He gets out of bounds to stop the clock. At the 25-yard line, coming up on the MSN Halftime Report, John Saunders and Terry Bowden will have the scores and highlights from around the country on this rivalry Saturday. Plus, they'll preview tonight's epic battle between Florida and Florida State. And of course, those two teams very interested in this game because... A South Carolina win here would help Florida's strength of schedule. And a Clemson win would help Florida State's strength of schedule in the PCS rankings. There's Kevin Youngblood wide open. Plenty of room to run after the catch. Across midfield to the 49 of the Gamecocks. That's a 25-yard pickup. And Woody Dantzler will take advantage of the stoppage in play to move the chains and have them ready to go with 112 left. And I love how they do this on offense for Clemson. They don't always in a hurry-up mode, but right now they want to take advantage of the clock and catch South Carolina trying to line up. So three timeouts left for each team. Rambert, a short gain. You have to use a timeout now. And the Tigers will. Second and five at the 44-yard line. 47 seconds left. Two timeouts left for Clemson. Dancer going deep for Gardner, and it is caught. Flag down to the secondary. There's a jump ball between Gardner and Brown. It actually looked like Brown had the best position to get the ball, but Gardner ripped it away for a 39-yard gain, but a late flag thrown in the middle of the field at the 11-yard line. There is no flag. What's interesting about that call, Sean, is usually when they call the ball being tipped, it's at the line of scrimmage, so there is no pass interference. This ball is tipped by the defender at the end of the play is why they don't call interference, but an excellent job of concentration by Gardner. No, I don't understand that one at all. I understand your explanation, but that is a head scratcher. The one that Lou will probably be asking about later as well. Lambert dodged one hit in the backfield from Faison, but... Did not get back to the line of scrimmage. And the clock ticks down to 17 seconds before it's stopped by Clemson. The Tigers have one timeout left. Willie Sams and Anthony Overstreet. A couple of reserve defensive linemen in there. And they combine to make the nice play. Season of resurgence for these two programs. Clemson and South Carolina. Clemson started the year 8 and 0 after a 6 and 6 season last year. They're guaranteed improvement this year under Tommy Bowden. But then the two losses, trying to avoid a third straight loss to end the regular season. Of course, South Carolina was 7 and 1 with back to back losses, so they're trying to avoid a third straight. One on one inside coverage. Dantzler pulls up and his throw to the back of the end zone is thrown away. One pump fake, and then with the heat coming on Woodrow, he elected to throw it away. It'll be third down and goal from the six. Twelve seconds and one timeout left. Clemson going without the huddle. That's just their normal offense. The clock stopped, but they're getting the coverage they want on the outside. Two big receivers. That's Youngblood down on the bottom here at six foot four. That's will fade over to that side. Dancer has time. Throws to the corner, and it is incomplete. Intended for Rod Gardner. Andre Goodman had the coverage. Fourth and goal from the six. And they'll bring the field goal unit on. And as Ed mentioned, it's been a shaky season kicking field goals for the Tigers. Aaron Hunt is the kicker. The true freshman, just five out of ten. 
with a long of 30. Missed two against Georgia Tech, which ultimately gave Georgia Tech the chance to win the game at the end. Jeff Scott is the holder. 22 yard try, just about an extra point, and Hunt makes it. Time Clemson 10, South Carolina 7. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC station. Back at Death Valley at halftime, Clemson on a late first half field goal has a 10 to 7 lead over South Carolina. Sean McDonough along with Ed Cunningham. It's unusual at the end of the half to see both coaches running after the officials expressing their displeasure, but that's what we saw at the conclusion of the first half. Tommy Bowden patiently waited his turn while Lou Holtz finished complaining. And I think what Lou was upset about was one of the key plays of the half, Ed, that non-offensive pass interference call against Clemson. The flag was picked up. They said the ball was tipped. Certainly it was not tipped here at the line of scrimmage. And, Sean, every time you watch it, the ball not tipped, you just realize that it should not have been called. And the official running in right there, it's his flag in his pocket. He's the one who should have made that call. It was right to wave off the, the flag, but to make an excuse like that, it was a really, really confusing call. It was an official way away from the play who threw the flag. It was picked up, and really the explanation seemed to be a cover just to pick up the flag and, in essence, make the right call in the final analysis. Leslie got a word with Lou. Leslie, what did Lou say? Well, Lou didn't want to talk much about what he planned on doing in the second half because he was still really hot about what happened with the officials in the end of the first half. He says they call pay offensive pass interference, but they say it's tipped. He said it's a 50-yard perfect spiral. But again, he didn't want to go into the second half. As for Coach Bowden, he said twice they've gotten in the red zone and haven't converted. He said they need to score when they get inside the 20. He didn't want to go into what he was upset with about the officials at the end of the first half. He said he talked to them about it and got it all cleared up. Thank you, Leslie. Bernard Rambert returns the opening kickoff of the second half. And wouldn't you know, there's a flag on the play. We <laughs> said that repeatedly in the first half as each team was penalized six times. I think what Tommy Bowden was upset about, first of all. During the return, blocking it back by the receiving team. Penalty is administered from the spot of the foul, half the distance of the goal. First, down. First of all, as a coach, you don't want to let the other guy have his say and you not get anything in. But I think he was upset that on the onside kick when the ball was clanging around at the end of the half, there were three seconds when they kicked. The ball bounced around for a while, touched people, and only one second came off the clock to allow South Carolina that chance to First throw the ball down the field on the last play of the half. He Wait. was holding up three fingers and <laughs> talking about a kick. Well, you mentioned SEC officials. It's uh, Clemson's clock operator who had the slow finger on the clock. So after the walk-off on the penalty, the Tigers begin at the 10, and Travis Zachary gets very little on first down. Now the Morgan Stanley Dean winner, first half stats, and it doesn't get much more even in total yardage than one yard separating the two. And it's penalty yards that were hurting Clemson early. 45 of those yards came on personal fouls after the play was over. They had to get calmed down a little bit in this rivalry. Zachary. Struggles out to the 18-yard line. He's about two yards short of the first down. The tackle made by DeAndre Island. Zachary has rushed for 46 yards in the game now. 47 yards officially. He needs 72 to reach 1,000 for the season. There's 25 still to go. And the throw from Dantzler is incomplete. Joe Don Reams was open, but the throw was low, and he couldn't pick it off the top of the grass at the 28-yard line. So three downs and a punt for Clemson to begin the second half. And the one thing about Woody Dansler, he has a very strong arm, and sometimes guys who have strong arms tend to throw the ball with the nose down, and that time he had Joe Don Reams wide open, just fired it, had it there on time, but the nose was down, drove it right into the ground. One very good punt, one poor punt in the first half for Jamie Somani. 58 yarder, the 17 yarder. He had pressure on that punt. Got it off. It might have hit a game clock. Tiger saying it's their ball, and it is. Kevin Youngblood recovered the football after it struck a South Carolina player near midfield. 
It hit Sheldon Brown. And the officials are conferring. They signal Clemson ball, but now they're having another of their numerous conferences today. Derek Watson got in on Somani and might have gotten a piece of it. South Carolina hadn't blocked the punt all year long. Blocked two last week against Florida. Very clearly, Sean, the ball hits Sheldon Brown as the Clemson defender. That's Kevin Youngblood. No question it hit his foot, but Youngblood's just trying to use his hands to push off. And I don't know what the officials had to talk about. No question that ball should go to Clemson. The ruling is that the player was pushed into contact with the ball. Therefore, there was no contact. That's right. The ball belongs to the receiving team, first and ten. Well, he's absolutely right. And I will say this for Steve Landis, the referee. He might not have agreed with all the calls today, but he is obviously in this crew very well versed in the rules. There have been a couple of complicated calls today that he's explained very well. And he explained that very well. Tommy Bowden doesn't agree, but that's the right call based on the rule as explained by Steve Landis. The only question was whether he was blocked in before he, if he touched the ball before he was blocked into him, and clearly he wasn't on the replay. North Carolina. First down, that's batted in the air. Terry Bryant batted it, and Terry Jolly picked it off. Three interceptions in the quarter thrown by Phil Petty. And the advantage in field position throughout this third quarter for South Carolina, but the Gamecocks haven't been able to do anything with it, thanks largely to the turnovers. Sometimes you got to use your head and then other parts of your body. Terry Bryant does an excellent job of reading the eyes of the quarterback. He gets up and knocks the ball down. Now, I don't think he means to kick this ball up in the air. He's kind of in a little zone. Maybe he did. He kicked that left foot up as the ball was going down. That's a heads-up play. Doing two things, backing up and knocking the ball down and then kicking it up into your teammates' hands. And this Clemson offense needed something to help it turn the field position. The defense does it for them, and here's Dantzler. Tackled by Rashad Faison, but it's a first down to the 38-yard line of South Carolina. A run of 13 for Woody Dantzler. The one thing I've noticed about Woody today, Sean, is how quickly he gets up after being tackled. It's that mental thing that I think he's trying to keep that ankle out of his head. And they go quickly. And it's Zachary turning the corner. Another first down. Another bounds at the 25-yard line, perhaps the 24. Andre Offing made the tackle. John, you mentioned earlier that Rich Rodriguez caused this a rhythm offense. You notice when things start going their way, they have a turnover by their defense, a nice play by Dancer, get in, snap it quick, and here comes another play. A defense, you start to tire and you can't chase as well. And the walk off to the 15-yard line, just inside the 15. The pitch back to Zachary, avoids the traffic behind the line, and gets a yard or two. Dennis Quinn pulled him down. And what might be the last play of the quarter, ordinarily it would be, but with as quickly as Clemson operates, they might get another off. And that puts Zachary, the last couple of rushing plays, over 1,000 for the season. He becomes the eighth different player to rush for 1,000 yards in one season for Clemson. The end of the third quarter, the score, 10-7 Clemson. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Started out like it was going to be a shootout. It's developed into a defensive struggle. Back at the 18-yard line, second down, 14. Gardner with the underneath pass and got the penalty yardage back. His third catch of the day, Cleveland Pinckney made the tackle. What a nice game Cleveland Pinckney's been playing. We've talked about Alex Hartley, the defensive back. Nose guard right here in the middle of your screen. Just does a fantastic job working one-on-one. -on -one. Comes all the way from the middle of the field. The screen was set up perfectly. You have to have good inside-out pursuit. But your nose guard over there running like that, that's the kind of hustle you need. Big play here. Big difference at this juncture between a field goal and a touchdown. Clemson leading by three and trying to add to it. Dancer surveyed the defense. Marked out some signals. 
The rush well defended, with the pass batted down and nearly picked off by DeAndre Island. And this is where this defense of Charlie Strong really reads the eyes of the quarterback. The middle safety was Island. He saw that Woody Danzer was going for the audible and cheated over to that side, nearly picks that. If he picks that one, Sean, another dropped interception, I'm not sure he doesn't go all the way. And both sides capable of trickery on special teams. Jeff Scott is the holder for Aaron Hunt. He's one for one today. The 30-yard attempt that matches longest of the season. And it is good. Now six for the Clemson Tigers. Clemson looking for its fourth straight win in this rivalry. Leads South Carolina by six. A long way to go. 14-05 remaining as Tony Lazara kicks off. Short kickoff down to Derek Watson at the 10. Clemson kickoff coverage has been excellent all day, and that's the case again today as he's out of bounds at the 22. I'll get to an establishment just in time to see if my Huskies can beat Washington State and sneak into the Rose Bowl. Phil Petty has struggled at quarterback. He's still in there. Derek Watson took the pitch and didn't go anywhere. Chad Carson made the tackle. Here in the second half, Petty's two out of six for 18 yards and three interceptions. They've had great improvement at South Carolina, a lot of different places, but in the last few ball games against Tennessee and Florida, they only had one offensive touchdown in each one of those ball games, and here today, the same can be said. They need to pick up something down 13-7. This is that point in the game where you can't continue to punt to Thompson. Reverse, Ryan Brewer. Nice move. Looked like he was dead at the line of scrimmage. Instead, it's a first down. And he got banged down by Robert Carswell with help from Braxton K. Williams. 14-yard game, and it looked like it wasn't going to go for anything. Phil Petty tries to get a block over on the left side of your screen, throws a whiff on Eason, but Brewer shakes Eason out of his shoes. Hardly goes down trying to make the tackle, but Brewer, not the fastest guy, not the strongest guy, but has great vision and really nice moves. They chose first and 15 instead of second and 10. Petty has a man. Short of a first down, Brian Scott. With a good gain on first and 15 out to the 42-yard line, a gain of 11. Second catch for Brian Scott, the junior from Darlington, South Carolina. And that's the first time South Carolina has gone to the other side against Daryl Crutchfield. Alex Ardley over there lined up to the offensive right. Offense's right has been so good that now you have to start looking at the other side. Second and four, Watson. Again, not doing much inside. Chad Carson there. Robert Carswell came to the aid of Carson. His dad, Tom, played at Georgia Tech. Looked like Chad might have taken a blow in the midsection there. And he's heading off. Rodney Thomas takes his place. A big third down now. And the crowd back in there. And on a third and short, your middle linebacker and leading tackler is not obviously the guy that you want standing on the sideline. Third and three, they'll go out of the gun. Three receivers to the left. Just a three-man rush. Petty has, Watson has a first down. In the Tiger territory to the 41-yard line. Bryant McNeil, the reserve defensive lineman, made the tackle. First catch of the day for Watson. Clemson giving a little different look to South Carolina with a zone. It's Gary Childress is going to drop out right here. So you got a three-man rush. Petty with plenty of time finds the dump off. But Childress, of course, is a defensive lineman, not used to being in coverage, can't get up and make the tackle. Sometimes I think, Sean, I'd rather have a linebacker back there covering them and still trying to fool him with his own way. There's a 16-yard game. Again, nothing doing inside for Watson. Terry Jolly with help from Keith Adams. 
Going back to Keith Adams, how he got knocked out this week in practice when we were talking to Tommy Bowden. He said, this guy practices so hard all the time. He gets little nicks and bruises. Of course, a concussion is not a nick or bruise, but just goes full motor seven days a week. He had a Clemson record 27 tackles last year in the game at South Carolina. The Clemson win. The showing blitz on second. The catch made by James Atkinson. He pulled down along the far sideline inbounds at the 36-yard line. His second catch about five yards short of the first down. Alex Ardley made the tackle. And the one thing Carolina has done very well today, their offensive line has picked up those outside blitzes extremely well. That time Keith Adams came and Melvin Page the right tackle through a really nice cut block. It was a three-step drop to give a window of opportunity for Petty to throw for. Third down and five. They converted a third and three a moment ago. He's changing the play. He has time. Petty throws for Brewer. First down. For the 29-yard line. Third catch for Ryan Brewer. Charles Hafley made the tackle. When you've got a guy like Brewer that can do this many things, really nice play. He runs out over the flat. Hafley, the strong safety, has to worry about the run just for a second. South Carolina was in the I formation. He's got a peek in there. He has run support to that side, and he's late getting out on Brewer. 22 remaining. Touchdown in the extra point would give South Carolina the lead. Watson bounces off the action inside. Fumble! It's near the sideline. And the Gamecocks got it back. Looked like Thomas Hill, the tight end. Recovered the fumble. Looked like Watson was in open space when he fumbled the football as well. Charles Hafley was there for Clemson. You mentioned earlier how much better Watson looks breaking it outside. A good job by Clemson. Good stiff arm. And just didn't tuck that ball away. Didn't have it tight enough against his body. And great hustle by the tight end Hill following the play and making a big recovery. Great shot of it. It looked like Carswell had the best shot at the fumble originally. Pinnock up the middle. On second and two, we got very little. Keith Adams made the tackle. We're under seven and a half minutes remaining now. Two timeouts left for South Carolina, and Clemson has all three. It's almost like a modern day Mr. Inside and Mr. Outside with Pinnock and Watson. You've got your pounder, your bruiser, and Pinnock when you've got short yardage and your big people in. And you've got Watson who can bounce it out, out and take it the distance. And another third down. Carolina in the red zone for the first time today. They convert on a third and one. Pinnock the first down, first and goal, South Carolina from just inside the three. What a nice job. We've talked about this offensive line. The left side is what South Carolina is relying on. You've got Hall and Laurel Johnson, two 300-pounders. They've been mixing things up in the middle of that offensive line, but that left side paved the way that time. First and goal, game Cox from the three. Pinnock, no gain. Keith Adams there, Charles Hafley up from his safety position. And at this point of the game, Sean, you've got to start thinking about, you know, you're at the four-yard line. You get everybody bunched in the middle there. I know this is what Lou Holtz has always done as a coach, is bunch everybody in to play power football. But against this defense on the four-yard line, think about spreading out some kind of play-action fake. Pinnock slipped down. Looked like he had a seam with Travis Lewis, the fullback, leading the way. That looked promising for South Carolina, but Pinnock, as he went to make the cut, slipped down. And now you have third down, and now you have to bring all your people in, your skill position guys, wide receivers, to go to the spread because Pinnock slipped down, whereas I think he could have done that a little earlier when you're 
just at that five yard line. It's very tough to get with this defense of Clemson. The strength is in the middle with their linebackers and defensive tackles. Here's another third and goal from the five. 16th play of the drive. Petty throwing the feed, and it is incomplete. Intended for Brian Scott. Charles Haefeli had the coverage. And a decision for Lou Holtz. He has the shaky field goal situation. He only has one timeout left. Top of your screen right here. You got the one-on-one -on -one fade. Good coverage by Haefeli. Turning and running. Is no face guarding in college football. He does not have to turn around and watch the ball. But Lou Holtz is making this decision, Sean, I think based on the fact that he doesn't believe in his kicking game. If he has a kicker, I think he probably plays a percentage as a kicker. Because if you kick now, then you leave yourself in a situation of rely perhaps on another kick exactly. to tie the game. If you don't get it, your defense has played well, play field position, hope you get it back and score a touchdown. Petty throwing the fade the other way. Flag thrown. They were holding the arm of Jamel Kelly again. And it's the same man who was holding him a moment ago. Darrell Crutchfield. Call for the interference in the end zone. And or is it against Kelly? The Clemson players are celebrating. Three times in the last two ball games, Florida last week and this week, as we look at Kelly, might have pushed Crutchfield a little bit as he was trying to get separation to catch the fade. Wow. But that's three times in this game and the Florida game that inside the five-yard line in the fourth quarter, uh, they couldn't get in the end zone. <laughs> looked like he couldn't get his left arm up at mm -hmm. because it was being held by Crutchfield. And apparently they said Kelly was holding Crutchfield's arm down. Zachary ahead for two yards. Five minutes left. And that was reminiscent of last week against Florida when South Carolina twice was down inside the five-yard line late in the game and could not punch it in. And even though they were down 20 at the time, Luke thought that that happening at the end of that ball game was really what took some fire out of his team. They played so well early and then kind of went away for two quarters. Had a chance to make it at least a ball game. Took some wind out of their sails, but not being able to get in. And the defense has been terrific for South Carolina. They need another big stop. Zachary bouncing off a couple of tacklers near the line of scrimmage. He's down short of the first down at the 13. They need the 16 for a first down, so it'll be third down and three. Andre Island and Sheldon Brown made the tackle. One of the reasons Charlie Strong went to this defensive alignment was to cause confusion and create turnovers. And he needs one here. Clemson with a third and short. They're in their total regular offense. They have not pulled out of the playbook at all trying to protect this lead. Hansler hits it and gets stopped short of the first down. Looked like they were dangerously close to a face mask on that South Carolina defense. Shannon Wadley, the primary tackler at the 15. They needed the 16. Cleveland Pinckney also in on the stop. Fourth down and one. And Lou Holtz installed a block punt in their week off before the Florida game. Of course, we all know who that paid off with two blocks. And they've got all the guys up on the line of scrimmage like they're going to come after Sumani. They have to make sure they stay on side. Jumping offside would be a critical error right here. Sumani, a low wobbly punt. Returnable. Brewer trying to get outside to the right. Didn't get much. Excellent coverage. 43-yard punt, four-yard return. Braxton K. Williams made the tackle. Back for the final 246 from Death Valley right after this. Well, Lou Holtz got what he was looking for when he decided to go for it on fourth down and goal. He needed his defense to hold on three downs, get the ball back in decent field position. He has just the one timeout left. And he hasn't had a great day, but he can make up for it with one heroic throw. It won't be that one. Out of bounds. Intended for Willis Ham. First time they've thrown in his direction today. 
And for South Carolina, this is a very tough spot to be in offensively. 240 left, one timeout. Clemson has two timeouts. Get down the field, get into scoring range, but you've got to eat a little bit of this clock. You don't want to leave Clemson with too much time because a score, and Clemson can go down and kick a field goal to win it. Has time, throws, has his receiver, Brian Scott. First down to the 40 yard line. Two and a half minutes left. Clock stops as they move the chains. 14 yard gain. Todd Fitch, the wide receivers coach, signals in the place. So it's nice about running this type of offense. You're always almost in that hurry up mode, so it's nothing new to you. Eddie out of the gun. Almost no rush, and still they complete the pass. Mel Kelly inside the 20 to the 17-yard line. His fourth catch, 23 yards on that one. Looked like they weren't even trying to rush at all. Those who were along the line of scrimmage did nothing. That's Alex Ardley on coverage, and Carswell is the safety. Ardley playing the outside coverage, knowing he has a two-deep zone help. Carswell not able to get over in time to make a play on the ball. Under two minutes left. The delay to Watson. Bouncing outside. Down to the eight-yard line, about a yard short of the first down. Alex Ardley made the tackle. And at some point, Tommy Bowden needs to start thinking about using his timeouts to save some of this clock. You're not throwing in the towel saying, okay, we're guaranteeing that Carolina's going to score, but you've got to start saving some of this time. Yeah, there's plenty of time in the situation South Carolina's in, inside the 10. They have a timeout left. It's Clemson that might need the time should South Carolina score. Second down and two. Out of the gun, spread formation, four receivers. Watson to the left of Petty. Petty, pump fake, throws, incomplete. Flag thrown, was thrown over the head of Jamel Kelly. Alex Ardley had the coverage, might have given him a shove in the back. But we're going to stop guessing on these yes, uh, pass interference flags <laughs> because what it looks like from here and what it has looked like to the officials today have been sometimes at odds. My question is, is that ball catchable, Sean? If this is defensive pass interference, that ball, Petty looked like he was almost throwing it away. By the defense. I don't think he was. A room, ball fights on the two-yard line. First down. And I think without the shove in the back, it doesn't appear to be uncatchable. He can't continue. Well, you're right. <laughs> he didn't want to continue toward the ball. Yeah was very high, but that shove certainly prevented him from making any move in that direction. Anyway, from the two, Watson jarred loose from the football. It's in the end zone. Touchdown! Recovered by the Gamecocks. Watson extended the ball to the goal line. Almost a fatal error. Adams knocked it out. The ball was recovered by Thomas Hill for a touchdown to tie the game. Second fumble recovery by Hill here in the late moments of the fourth quarter. This one for a touchdown. A great hit on the ball by Keith Adams right on the helmet. Pops it forward and Hill, the second heads up play, falling on a football. The last time he kept the drive alive deep in the country territory, this time for six points. They've had kicking problems all week. Corsi took over last week in Florida. With the problems all season. Low line drive, but right down the middle. And South Carolina leads by a point with 59 seconds to go. Jason Corsi walked on to the team during his sophomore year because he had a friend who was going to try out as a long snapper, as a walk-on. Of course, he went with him, <laughs> tried out his kicker, got involved in the program, had no action, essentially, except for a kickoff man. Until last week, when he kicked the extra points, did not have a field goal attempt, missed his only field goal try today, but has made the extra points. So he never envisioned
mentioned that when this season began that he'd be in this situation in this rivalry. The reason he was put in this situation was pretty much blind luck, Sean. That ball pops out with that many orange jerseys around. You would assume that somebody from Clemson would have fallen on it. Imagine the mixed emotions and how quickly they change for a head coach. Ball comes out, he thinks, oh no, we blew another opportunity inside the five. Oh, wait a minute, we scored. Well, Lou's not at Notre Dame anymore, but apparently he still has some of the luck of the Irish on his side, including the performance by the kicker today. And they elect to kick it all the way downfield. Ryan Mance. Still on his feet, and all the way out to the 32. Jeremiah Garrison made the tackle. Clemson has two timeouts remaining. Now bear in mind their field goal kicking is very shaky as well. Aaron Hunt here in the fourth quarter kicked a 31 yarder and that is his longest of the season and the longest of his career. He's a true freshman. Brian Mance gives great field position as Clemson offense Sean but if they get inside the 40 yard line I wouldn't be surprised if they take a few shots in the end zone because of the kicking problems. Dantzler zings it over the middle. Travis Zachary couldn't get outside. And that's going to be a costly play in terms of the time. So costly they'll use one of the timeouts. It would have taken a long time to line back up. 38 seconds left. In fact, second and five. One timeout left now for Clemson. From the 37, Dantzler flushed from the pocket. He's out of bounds near the 44 yard line Andre Offing chased him out Cleveland Pinkney applied the pressure out of bounds with 32 seconds left and even though Woody Dantzler didn't get to finish the last two ball games they Tommy Bowden didn't think he was going to be able to finish this one it's that left ankle that they were concerned about but here in the fourth quarter as he runs away from Pinkney it's very obvious that he's back close to 100% 32 seconds left from the 44 yard line. Dancer going deep for Gardner. Incomplete. And with a lot of flags thrown on the perimeter today for pass interference on each side. On that play, they seem to let a lot of contact go. Gardner with Andre Goodman in coverage. But with a free safety in the middle, that's where this defense, it's not really vulnerable, but that's really the only place you're going to take a chance. You can throw things to the middle because the clock will stop first down, but so dangerous against this defense with that middle safety, an interception can happen any time if he reads the quarterback's eyes. 26 seconds left, second and 10. Clemson down by a point of its own 44. Dantzler in trouble, running for the sideline. He slipped down in bounds right before he's going to get to the sideline. They have to use their last timeout. Cecil Caldwell was chasing him. Dantzler was about to run out of bounds to stop the clock and preserve that timeout, but he slipped. Very obvious Lou Holtz has this team in very good condition. Not a very deep South Carolina defense. Dantzler trying to make a cut. We've seen a few guys slip on this field today. It was raining a few days before the game, but this South Carolina defense, great hustle all day. Clemson has to pick up somewhere near 40 yards to be real comfortable with their true freshman trying this kick. The, the good thing about the college rules for Tommy Bowden, that they get a first down, they can stop the clock so they can run up and spike it. Mm -hmm. They need the first down first. Third down and 12. Hansler going for a bunch for Gardner. Lots of pushing. He has it! At the 8-yard line, Rod Gardner. Goodman had the coverage. Now, was he out of bounds, or did they just stop it to move the chains? Clemson taking no chances, racing to the line of scrimmage. 49-yard gain. They're going to wind the clock. He was not out of bounds. So Dancer spikes it. Eight seconds left. Sean, with seven seconds left, they can take a shot. They're sending in Hunt right now. Close enough that they figure the freshman can make it. Aaron Hunt, two for two today. 
That 31 yarder was today. It was the longest attempt of the year, just 39 yards. He's now 7 for 12 on the season in field goals. The true freshman for Oak Ridge, Tennessee, in position to be a hero because of this catch by Gardner. And, Sean, you know, they've been calling stuff all day. All day. You know, I, I agree, let guys play, but if you're going to call it one way all day and then at the end. They played called some ticket tack yes, stuff they all have. day, and that's... that was a pretty good shove to shed the defender that went unflagged. No question. And if you're going to call it one way the entire day and then it comes down to the end of the game, I think you've got to call it the yep. same way. The holder is Jeff Scott. He is the son of Brad Scott, the former head coach at South Carolina, Lou Holtz's predecessor, now an assistant coach at Clemson. And obviously that didn't sit very well <laughs> with some of the Gamecock folks. And now Coach Scott's son, a key part of one of the most important plays in this rivalry, Aaron Hunt. Up and good! 25 yards! All fans, please stay off the field. All fans, off the field. Perfect and the true freshman who has struggled all season long. The Georgia Tech two misses, not far removed in his memory, makes the huge kick, biggest kick of his early career. They didn't want a celebration, Kelly, and once he uh, enjoyed the moment, he chased some of his players back onto the sideline and shoved a couple of them. Holtz says team heartbroken after the last second loss to Tennessee, decimated after Florida. One can only imagine what they'll be feeling after this. Tony Lazare kicks off. Watson has some running room. Still on his feet, laterals it. The ball's on the ground, a good lateral, and Brian Brewer had some running room. But it was an errant pitch. Corey Alexander fell on it to end the game, and they stormed the field. So Clemson concludes the regular season in nine and two. Dissipating, disappointing third straight loss for South Carolina, 7-4. The Clemson wins it. Here's Leslie Goodell. Coach, what an exciting win for you. Can you put this whole thing into words? Well, you know, uh, we, we lost one like early against Georgia Tech, and it feels good to get one. If you stay in long enough, you'll win your share of those and lose them. I thought South Carolina's play extremely hard, so did our guys. Two last minutes. Different feeling in here because of the rivalry. Oh, yeah, you know, in-state recruiting rivalry. you got to live with it 365 days a year, so it's a big win. The Woody Dancer not being 100%, he should look pretty good today. Yeah, he was not on his normal game, but uh, he played good enough for us to win. If you look at the season as a whole, are you happy with how you guys have played? Yeah, you know, in the second year, nine wins. It hadn't been done here in 10 years. I'm real happy for the seniors. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Once again, the final score, Clemson 16, South Carolina 14. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence.